Hello, this is Alonzo from alonzosblog.com. I was 16 years in Scientology, 15 years in anti-Scientology, and now I've been eight years out of both, writing about each. Today I'm going to talk more about the Jeffrey Augustine Karen De La Carrier Information Control Network and highlight some of the other creators who are beginning to expose these two. We'll start with Marisa Sigmund, Diane Etix. Here's what she had to say. So I don't care if people want to make money off of it, but if you are like taking donations and this is, you know, Karen and Jeff are notorious for this, they will throw you 50 or 100 and then say, hey, make a video about this. So when you start receiving money from people like that and obeying their orders, you have to ask yourself, do you want to be a whore or do you want to be a legitimate person that um, can independently think on your own without receiving money and taking orders from those people? This is a great point. Listen, let me tell you my story. In 2010, when Mike Rinder and Marty Rathbun and Amy Scobie and all of these people from Mint Base came out onto the internet and began controlling everything, Karen De La Carriere called me and told me that I should not be writing about L. Ron Hubbard and the tech of Scientology itself. The problem is David Miscavige. You need to write about that. You have to understand. <laughs> I had been in Scientology and I had worked for seven and a half years for free for these people that were at Int Base. They knew it was a con. And when I found out how much they were lying and the depth of criminality that these guys had sunk to, I was not going to be taking orders from anyone from Int Base. And so I told Karen, listen, you're not going to tell me what to write. You're not going to tell me what to think. Just knock it off. It was at that point that I was out. It was very clear that Alonzo became persona non grata to this information control network that Karen De La Carriere and Mike Rinder and all of these other people were running. And as a result, over the next few years, people would come up to me on the internet and say, You're, you work for OSA, don't you? And this whole back channel campaign started against me, Alonzo is an OSA agent. You know what? That was a consequence of me telling Karen to fuck off. And I would do it again. You have to understand, there is no way you can fight a cult by being in a cult. This idea that you're going to coordinate with other people and you're going to talk about the things that other people want you to talk about and not talk about the things that other people don't want you to talk about that is impossible. That is an impossible situation. Don't even try it. You'll have to have courage. And who knows? They may, they may start calling you an OSA agent. You'll, you'll stop receiving calls. You'll stop receiving, receiving the insider information. So what? Let's go on because Marisa has even more to say about the Karen and Jeffrey's network here. Um, and then, which, by the way, I, I just, I have to throw this out there because it's been, some, been something that's been bugging me for a while. Um, I don't understand why Jeffrey Augustine is currently emailing the autopsy report of Kyle Brennan to people um, under the circuits. Because, you know, Serge Del Mar, myself, a lot of us second gens, we are interested in the Kyle Brennan story. And I'm very sorry, Karen and Jeff, we're going to continue to tell his story because you cannot buy us off the way that you can other people that were never in Scientology. Okay, she has now revealed that Jeffrey Augustine is sending Kyle Brennan's autopsy report to people who mention Kyle Brennan. What he's doing here, you, you do realize that Victoria Britton had to almost redo the investigation into her son's death outside of Pinellas County because Pinellas County is so heavily controlled by Scientology and that has been thoroughly documented. You need to understand that Jeffrey Augustine is running the church's narrative on the death of Kyle Brennan. Why would he ever do that? And why would you ever listen to him? You need to look past the Lexapro and all that stuff. That's the church's short story that is used to take you off the trail of this murder.
So Jeffrey Augustine, in sending out these emails, is running the church's narrative on the death of Kyle Brennan. Ask yourself, why would Jeffrey Augustine run the church's narrative on the death of Kyle Brennan? Okay, so it's great that Marisa is talking about this. I fully support her in doing this and finding out more about Kyle Brennan and all of the different things that went on and are still going on, still being suppressed about Kyle Brennan. This needs to be exposed, completely exposed. The church's narrative has already been debunked, but too few people know that it's been debunked. And to hear that Serge and Marisa are intending in making sure that happens makes me feel very good. Now, on to the next one. Here is, here is Marilyn Honig and Gabrielle Toth, a Canadian ex-Scientologist. They start talking about Jerry Armstrong. Now watch what Marilyn says here. Jerry Armstrong. Mm -hmm. Mike, Jerry has asked so many times to speak to Mike to try and clear the air. He will not answer him. He sent him like emails, you name it. There was never an apology to this man that he utterly ruined. He was, it, yeah, he was disregarded as. Just real quick, an apology is not necessary, okay? What is necessary is what was done to Jerry Armstrong legally, the lies that were told in the IRS filings. That's what's necessary, not an apology. We'll go on. Was, uh, create a fruitcake, I believe the word was. Yeah, and you know maybe. him personally. He's not a fruitcake. I know cake. him personally. He's not a fruitcake. But the guy has been fair game for so long. He's in his seventies now. He's actually a marathon runner. He's in incredible shape. But um, and he's the sweetest man. He really is. Um, but you know, like he he's told me some stuff, and he he was going to the FBI about Scientology. He was a massive threat. They did not mm -hmm. want him to release this information that he had, mm -hmm. right? Because it was damning. It was damning evidence. It was exposing crimes. They shut this guy down so hard. I mean, he can't even enter into the U.S. He would be arrested mm -hmm. because, wow. you know, so many lawsuits and His NDAs you know, and all that. He had right. to sign NDAs yeah. and, and, yeah. and he's violated them because he's an activist. He, he, mm -hmm. he spoke out. Do you think Anyways, part of let me just also interject here. Jerry's point <clears throat> when he signed those NDAs and, and the agreement, he was told by his own attorney that there is no way that they can stop your First Amendment right in speaking about your own religious experiences. This agreement is not worth the paper it's printed on. And so since then, Scientology has done its best and failed, really. The last one was two years ago when there was a rumor that Jerry was going to fly to California from Canada and give a speech. Hendrik Boxen wrote up, a, I think, a 190-page request for an arrest warrant for Jerry Armstrong, and the judge threw it out. So they're doing their best to, to enforce this agreement that violates Jerry's First Amendment rights, which you can't do, and they're failing. So the next part is very important with this Perrin and Jeffrey back-channel information control dead agent network. Watch Marilyn here. Can I just ask you a question? Do you think of part course. of this um, possible controlled opposition yeah. could also um, be um, a controlled yeah. narrative as well? Because, you know, I as I was talking to Liz Gale the other day, I was saying, you know, she said, well, what do you, what do you think as being a never in, um, what are you seeing? And I was just looking back to 2017 when I started watching the, the Aftermath show, which very much helped me. And Mike, Mark, Claire, all of them um, really helped me by telling their stories and to, to deconstruct what happened to me. I don't take that away from them. I don't take away, you know, Mark and Claire, I'm sure personally they're lovely people, but it doesn't mean that these behaviors are okay. And it doesn't mean that we have to just sign off on everything that everyone is telling us to, to say, to think, to do, to not do. 
everyone is telling us. Who is everyone? Is it Jeffrey Augustine? Did he send you an email about Jerry Armstrong? Is it Claire and Mark? Who specifically is telling you what to talk about and what not to talk about? That's what needs to be exposed. Jerry Armstrong is a hot button issue. Anybody brings up Jerry Armstrong and it's like, whoa, you know. Um, who is doing that? Who is making Jerry scary? These are the people that need to be exposed. I talked earlier about the possible consequences of giving these people the finger. They may kick you out. They may start to fair game you. So what? Have courage. It's almost as if Scientology has outsourced their fair game and information control to Karen and Jeffrey and the network that they've established. And to the degree that Aaron Smith-Levin is running SPTV in that way, then Aaron Smith-Levin is also running the church's narrative. All of this needs to be exposed. It needs to be questioned. And this information control network needs to be dismantled. It needs to lose all of its power. And the way that's done is by every individual deciding to have courage to tell the truth and to say what they see and to not care. It's like, okay, it's like a football game, right? You have the football, you might get tackled. They might tackle you. So what? You're playing football. There are going to be consequences to playing football. You're going to be tackled. You're going to be blocked. The other side is going to try to stop you. That's all part of this. Please have courage. Dismantle these people. You do realize, Marilyn, that when Jerry becomes Scary Jerry, that's the church's operation. Jerry is the key to getting rid of their tax-exempt status. That is why they are making him scary. So what we need to know is who is everyone? Exactly who made Jerry scary? Name their names. All right. I have said what I needed to say in this, and I appreciate everybody listening. I have seen this for so many years. We cannot have a high school clique of STP veers, okay, where you're popular because you do what you're told, and you're not popular because you do what you think is best. That needs to be dismantled. Again, this town needs an enema, y'all. Please do not comply. Thank you very much. Over and out.